Sunday after Pentecost to worship together. Let us prepare our hearts, come before God, to confess our sin and to receive His forgiveness. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have been bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be right in your will and in our ways. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you praise, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of God,
strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For the waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Here ends the reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 146, found on page 287 in the front of your pen.
region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know when he, know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dog. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, Jesus sighed and said to the man, Ephatha, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open. His tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about communion, didn't we? We talked about the wafers and the wine. Well, today we're going to celebrate communion, and communion is a holy sacrament. I'm going to read to you from the Bible. Remember, we read from the Bible, don't we, Robert? Uh-huh. And we're going to talk about um, Jesus and the disciples at the Last Supper. It says, Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks, and uh, handed it to them. He said, All of you who drink of this, this is my blood of the covenant. It is to be poured out to forgive the sins of many people. Here is what I tell you from now on. I won't drink wine with you again until the day I drink with you in the Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out onto the Mount St. Olives. I'm not going to skip about the wafer. But communion, this today, remember you'll come up with mommy and daddy, and mommy and daddy get a communion wafer, and they say, take and eat, this is the blood, this is the bread of life. Yeah. And then they do that. And that's right. Then they get the blood of Christ, which is the wine. And where do they put it? Where do they put the cup when they get done? They put it over there. Okay, yeah, because they're on that side. They put it over there. <laughs> I knew what you were thinking there. And then Pastor Lim, he'll, he'll bless you, right? Because you've not, you've not went through your uh, lessons yet. But when you do, then you get to take communion. And this is a very sacred time for us because this is when, as Christians, you know, you'll notice that sometimes people go back and they fold their hands and they bow their head and they're reflecting and they're talking to Jesus. Some people do that, some people sing, and some people just, you know, gaze maybe up at our beautiful stained glass. But everyone in their own mind is having a conversation or reflecting about what they have done good and what they want to ask forgiveness yeah. for, right? right? So today is a very special day. So every day that we have communion, it's a very special day. It gives us a chance to reflect upon Jesus and our lives, OK? 
Hey. You two are new buddies, aren't you? <laughs> you just are cute together. <laughs> you're cute too. Are you handsome? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Because you're a big boy, right? Yeah. Okay. You want to sit down there with them and we'll say a prayer? Want to come down here, Maggie? We'll fold our hands and say a prayer? Okay, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, help me to reflect, me to reflect upon, my life upon my life and your forgiveness. And your forgiveness. Amen. 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 It's always great to have kids in church. <laughs> yes. I have a five-year-old granddaughter myself. So, uh, just a little bit about myself so that you don't see just a stranger uh, leading worship today, uh, Robert Lynn, Pastor Lynn. Um, I am a hospice uh, chaplain with IU Health. I've uh, been doing that for the last 15 years. Um, I have pastored uh, in New York and Texas. Uh, in fact, uh, driving up here, it kind of reminds me of uh, my two congregations that I had in South Texas, quite different in terms of area, um, but it was farmland too, you know, all around. Uh, and they were growing, growing uh, cotton out there, and it's hot. Anyway. Um, let's see. I have a wife and two grown uh, boys. Uh, one is married and with a six-year-old and his wife. And uh, <coughs> my wife and I are empty nesters. <coughs> sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But we manage it. Well, I appreciate uh, being here today to share this worship service with you. Uh, I typically supply quite a bit uh, and have been kind of all around uh, the state, here and there, in Indiana. But my first time here uh, at St. Paul's in Oli. Am I saying it right? Oli? Oli. Olien. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> first mistake already, right? Olien, yes. And, uh, would it, would it be your first time having a Lutheran that looked like me? <laughs> <laughs> not German, not Norwegian, not Swedish. <laughs> um, so I am from Malaysia originally, a uh, Chinese immigrant from China to Malaysia, to Singapore, Malaysia, were my parents. And then, uh, I came to Canada and North America probably about 40 years ago. So have been in the States uh, about 40. Spent a few years in Canada. And so here, here I am in Hoosier country. So let's look at the lesson today from our readings. And thank you for uh, reading for leading the music and for uh, your participation in this worship service. I love the image of God's healing grace that we see in Isaiah 35 today. God gives sight, he gives hearing and life, and God turns a desert into a spring. St. James chapter two, God shows no partiality and does not favor one over another. God calls his church to do the same. Welcome one and welcome all. The rich, the poor alike, the men and women, Jews and Gentiles, boys and girls, white and black. God calls the people of God to see one another and in every person around us and in our entire world with his eyes of love and compassion and to proclaim God's unconditional love throughout the world. 
God calls us, you and I, to put action into our faith. And in today's Gospel, St. Mark, the seventh chapter, we see Jesus putting faith into action. Jesus demonstrating God's healing grace with love and compassion in two particular stories. In these stories, we see Jesus crossing geographical and cultural, ethnic and religious boundaries, reaching out with healing grace. And the result was changed lives, the outpouring of God's grace. In the first story, Jesus goes out of town. It's probably like leaving Olean for a few days to go to the Indiana sand dunes on Lake Michigan. And so Jesus traveled some distance to the region of Tyre and Sidon, which would be today's Lebanon. Over there, it was nothing like Galilee. Geographically, Tyre and Sidon were a busy center of commerce. It was located, or it is located, on the Mediterranean Sea. Culturally and ethnically, it was predominantly Gentile. A region pervasive with Greek culture, far and away from the Jewish center of worship, Jerusalem, here in Tyre and Sidon, religion was much more eclectic and diverse. What was a Jewish rabbi doing here in deep, gentle, or rather Gentile country, entire and Sidon, you might ask. Well, we don't really know. Except that Mark tells us that Jesus was needing some, or rather needing to get away from the people and have some private time. We also know that Jesus didn't want to be found. I guess Jesus needed some R&R, &R, some rest and relaxation. Because in the last few days, or perhaps weeks, he had been very busy with his disciples, doing works of ministry and preaching the word in Galilee. But the fame of Jesus preceded him, even in deep Gentile country. There was no place to hide, not even in the Indiana sand dunes. Jesus was so famous that a Lebanese woman slash Syrophoenician came looking for him and she was desperate for a cure for her daughter who was demonized. Now, in those days, Jews and Gentiles didn't mix. Much less a Gentile woman coming up to speak to a man, a Jewish rabbi, Jesus. And the Lord's reply to the Lebanese woman was apparently downright rude and derogatory. Basically, Jesus said, no, because the Jews has first dibs. I cannot throw God's blessing to the dogs. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Yes, the Gentiles, you and I, we were called dogs in those days by the Jews. I'm guessing as human as Jesus was, God incarnate, Jesus, in my opinion, was probably making a sincere statement 
based on cultural norms of his day. I'm not saying that it was right for Jesus to speak in, with such insult to the woman. However, I do not believe that Jesus said it with an intent to hurt the desperate woman who was there to plead for her daughter's healing. I believe that Jesus was stating the vision of God's mission to seek and to save the house of Israel. Which, unfortunately, was expressed in a culturally condescending and insulting fashion to the woman. But this is where everything changed for Jesus for the woman and for her daughter. The woman's witting response to Jesus in her unrelenting plea somehow changed Jesus himself and his mission that day. <coughs> Instead of shying away from what Jesus said, with a wide open heart, she expressed her faith in the Jewish rabbi the healer, that she would savor the crumbs of God's blessing that fall from the children's table. Brothers and sisters, I believe that something happened inside of Jesus. After all, Jesus was very human, like you and I growing in every way in his understanding of who he was and learning about the cultures and the people that he encountered. Something happened to Jesus. The Lebanese woman's statement did something to change Jesus' vision and mission that day. Instead of coming back at the woman with another blow to her plight and plea, Jesus pronounced healing upon the woman's daughter. On that day in Tyre, near the Mediterranean Sea, there was more than just the healing of a girl somewhere there. On that day, there was the breaking down and healing of cultural, ethnic, and religious barriers. There was the breaking down of boundaries that divided men and women. Gender barriers. There was the breaking down of racial walls between Jew and Gentile. And healing father. Today, you and I, reading this gospel, 2,000 years later, Gentiles meeting to worship together in the name of Jesus Christ. We are indebted to this Syrophoenician woman who sought Jesus out so much for his R&R, &R, right, by the sea. And Jesus' encounter with her caused a change in his own self-understanding as the Christ and God's saving grace to include those outside of the house of Israel. And thus, there was also the breaking down of barriers between insiders and outsiders. Jesus, in the embodiment of God's saving grace to all the world, demonstrates the justice of God, reaching from inside, reaching outside. 
Jesus in his humanity demonstrates God who is divine and all powerful is not far away. God is near to his creation. God is near to humanity. God reaches out to touch, to bless, and to heal broken humanity. The second story in Mark chapter 7 illustrates that. Jesus' healing of the man who was deaf and mute is nothing short of the demonstration of God in the person of Jesus Christ coming up close to our faces, looking at us into our eyes, touching us, and imparting his healing grace to each and every one of us. Christ Jesus our Lord is the embodiment of compassion. So doing, Jesus was ready to take the judgment of his critics. But as the psalmist said, says today, mercy triumphs over judgment. Geogra geographical boundaries did not stop Jesus from going <coughs> into Gentile country. Cultural, ethnic, and religious divisions did not stop Jesus from hearing the plea and faith of a non-Jew, the Lebanese woman. Men and women, boys and girls, Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, the broken heart, downtrodden, the blind, the deaf, the mute, and all those who have nothing are welcomed by God who is full of mercy grace and redemption. This is the God of Jesus, and Jesus is the embodiment of this God. The God who is impartial, the God who is merciful, the God who is just and compassionate. And now, God calls his people his church, the community of faith, to be the embodiment of God's mercy, justice, compassion, and healing grace in the world. God calling you and I to be that embodiment by reaching out like he does, to cross barriers like Jesus. As God's people, we walk in step with the Lord. We cross boundaries. We break down barriers and build bridges. With mercy, grace, and the love of God in Jesus our Lord. And so, Together with the whole church, we pray, open our eyes to see with your encompassing love, open our ears to hear the stories of our neighbors, and then open our arms to reach out, to embrace, to care, to love our neighbors and our world as God loves. For all peoples, from here to the uttermost parts of the earth. All peoples are made in the image of God. Our faith is not just empty words, as St. James admonished us. Let us put our faith into action. God's work, our hands. St. Paul, brothers and sisters, you are the embodiment of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In this community, to 
to bring the healing grace to all. You are the springs of water in the burning sands of desert, as Isaiah spoke. In the words of Saint Teresa of Abba, she says, Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes, you are Christ's body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. In the name of the Christ.
You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry hands. Bless all who advocate, advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Especially as we celebrate Labor Day, unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. You will accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Lord, in your mercy. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation, St. Paul. Lord, in your mercy. You embrace all who have died in faith and bring them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
which you have now received, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Yeah. 